founded in 1792 in an area where not even the Tuscarora had permanent settlements, North Carolina's new capital was nonetheless a city, and cities have buildings, mostly wooden buildings, close together, and that leads to fires. People first bringing water to American cities were much more concerned with fighting fires than with washing or drinking. Which is why, when Raleigh had grown to comprise some thousand people in 1818, it put a water wheel in the Rocky Branch Creek south of town and pumped water through wooden pipes to a water tower. But the water carried with it mud and silt, causing pipes to burst, and within a couple years the project had utterly failed. The city returned to wells and pumps. Not until 1886, when Raleigh held some 10,000 people, did the city take another stab at civic water supply, building a real pump south of the city, drawing water from Walnut Creek just upstream from its confluence with the Rocky Branch. The steam engines in the first water plant pumped 2 million gallons of water per day through cleansing sand pits and charcoal and gravel filters and into a reservoir, from which it then traveled to a 100,000-gallon water tower, which, though no longer in use for water storage, still stands today in downtown Raleigh, just a block from the capital. From there, the clean water traveled through wooden pipes beneath city streets. When engineers first fired up the system in 1887, it powered six fire hoses at once, each shooting 120 feet into the air. By 1910, Raleigh had 55 miles of water mains, and by 1923 had opened two connected reservoirs upstream of the intake, Lake Raleigh and Lake Johnson. The two small lakes both lay in the Walnut Creek watershed, which meant that they limited Raleigh's water supply to only the rain that fell in the couple dozen square miles of their tiny watershed. Like the city it served, the plant expanded, and in 1927 the city began piping water from the Swift Creek watershed further south. The problem was, the plant couldn't keep up. 